I am going to start building a gantry crane for moving a lathe. So um, I'm going to switch to time lapse mode because I think it's just a more efficient use of time uh, on these videos. Um, so I've got my Miller Matic 211 um, MIG welder that I'll be using, and I've got my Evolution Rage 2 saw that I'll be using to square and trim my material. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, please comment. I'll try to get back to them. Um, otherwise, if you enjoy the video, please click like. If you are interested in the design theory, there's a separate video about how it's designed and why. And um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate you and uh, hope you enjoy the time lapse. So I want to take a second to explain um, what I'm doing here. So the vertical alignment of these poles is really important with regards to this beam. If it was off by a little bit, it would cause the um, boom to bind as it goes up and down. Because the design of this jib little gantry crane is there'll be a hydraulic cylinder here that pushes this beam up. It um, all the leg is, is for support. This, this leg is just sort of a, a cylinder or a sleeve that extends. And um, it, it keeps the simplicity of this to a minimum. So the force is from this uh, quarter inch tubing to that quarter inch tubing against this I-beam. And I'm not relying on, um, it, I'm relying on a minimum of my welds. So, you know, and I don't have to fabricate pin slots for this, which would be very time consuming. It'd be great because then I could, you know, make this thing really tall. And I may come back and do that at some point. But for right now, I'm just trying to get this thing built because I gotta move something the day after tomorrow. So the next step is I'm gonna turn it on its side and I'm gonna weld these eight-inch casters to it. And then I can slide the thing in because I'll have to take a break. And so one of the things I did is I measured the center line, and then I just kind of let this hang. And so now this could slide up and down with a minimum passel. And this is three and a half inch tubing with three inch tubing inside of it. And there's like an eighth of an inch of play, which is which is fine. That that's enough, and it won't. It's not going to cause a whole lot of problems when I start lifting with it. It'll smooth itself out on the inside. Worst case, I'll grease the inside.
All right, friends. So I uh, modified this design a little bit. I'm using just some extra half-inch nuts that I have to just kind of keep this from drifting out. Um, it's mainly an in-transit problem when it's being moved in the back of a truck. I don't want these to just kind of vibrate and get loose. So I've got a little bit less than 18 and a quarter, 18 and a half inches of lift. That's a pretty, pretty decent amount of lift. Um, these were $30 a piece, so the whole rig's about 500 bucks. The casters were $18 a piece uh, at Northern Tool. Um, <coughs> you know, overall, I, I'm extremely happy with this. Um, these are auxiliary supports, so if I'm going to lift something heavy, I can slide these under. That way, if it starts to bend these beams, it, it stops it and transfers the load straight down. Um, when they're not in use, they just turn upside down. Again, you know, the receivers are probably longer than they need to be, but the idea here is that everything is right where I need it. Um, I built some storage in for these so that they can go into spots and they won't vibrate out um, when it's in the back of a truck or something. Um, it is a little slow to lift, but I think this is a good design. Um, this is, I don't know that this is necessary up here, but these little sockets, um, they're just some cutoff uh, tubing, but these little sockets keep this from drifting, you know, one way or the other, and, um, you know, I'm just trying to make sure nothing moves when I'm lifting. So it is rated for two and a half tons, which is, you know, 5,000 pounds. Now, I wouldn't do this with a load, but... You know, the way this is designed, it, it will tilt over like this. And, you know, that, that looks funky, but there's really nothing, you know, again, I wouldn't do that with a load on it. But with no load, there's no real issue with dropping it down like this. I don't think there's an issue. Well, maybe there's an issue. Maybe there isn't. I don't think there is. I don't think there's any issue whatsoever. Oh, well, it, it apparently it locked that side. So I'll have to raise this side in order to get that one loose. That's kind of funny. Normally I would lower that a couple inches at a time on each side, or I'd have a second person helping me. so we can put bars under it, move it out where we can get to put the pallet under it. And then when I get it here, I'm gonna use it to get over some of the uneven parts of the driveway and I'll eventually use it to unload the lathe. And, you know, again, it's, you know, it's 500 bucks, but how many times would I have had to hire how many people to help me move this lathe? And um, this allows me to continue to be self-sufficient, which is something I value. And um, there's no telling where I will be able to use a, a small gantry crane that I can roll into my garage and it's pretty self-contained. Um, the only thing I'm going to do at this point is I've got one more section of this tubing and I'm going to make a little captive spot to keep this, um, this uh, D-ring. Well, it's not really a D-ring, I forgot the name of this. But anyway, I'm going to make a spot for that right here. So I'm going to weld this you know, up here, so it's where I want it. And then, um, I don't think I need it, but I'm going to go ahead and add some 
some reinforcements to it um, to just make it a little bit more rigid and transfer um, some of the stress out. So, um, you know, I probably would move the wheels out if I had this to do over again, but I wanted the wheels to stay inside the footprint of um, the, the rig because that way I can push it up against something and I don't have to worry about the wheels being in the way. Um, you know, and again, it, these things should be built the way you engineer them and as long as you're comfortable with uh, the way you've designed it, it's okay. This is dangerous, um, so you know if you're not comfortable with this, don't do it at home. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and tack that up there, and um, I think I am going to fabricate some some 45 degree angles just to reinforce this a little bit. Um, so I'm going to run something from here and here just to um, make this a little bit more rigid than it already is. Um, I think it's pretty stout, but I want to make it more stout. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to go back to time lapse. So, it's done. I've added these. Uh, you know, that's not the best cutting or welding I've ever done, but it'll work. Um, you know, I think everything's good to go. I, uh, you know, at this point, it's going to go over there and be stored. And um, Saturday, it's going with me to get the lathe. So, I think, I think this is a neat project. You know, these could have been up another inch, so I lost an inch of uh, travel. Yeah, you know, it's not the end of the world. I've still got 18 inches, which is a foot and a half. That's a heck of a lot of lift. I've got a place to keep this, and I've got a pair with hooks that uh, will go with it. And the pair with hooks will clamp right on here. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting and enjoyable. Please like the video if you did, and please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Uh, be sure to watch for the lathe move videos. I'll talk to you later.